Hello! So, if you've clicked on this video, you are looking for a refresher, or I am currently out sick, but this is Mr. Burson's Python Profit Project. So this is a short four-day project that is designed to be used uh, a little bit after the middle of the semester, after we've learned a significant amount of code, I'd like to be able to let you put that knowledge to use. So, based on the following images that we see right now on the screen, we are going to be talking about 3D printers and how 3D printers are going to relate to programming. But first things first, what is a 3D printer? 3D printers are adaptive. They can print nearly anything out that you want in plastic. That plastic can actually vary as well. <clears throat> Two common types of plastic are PLA and ABS plastic. Each have their own advantages and disadvantages. PLA has a lower melting point and is more flexible than ABS plastic. However, because it has a lower melting point, that also means it is not as resistant to heat. ABS plastic, on the other hand, has a very high melting point at 260 degrees Celsius. Uh, PLA is at 200 Celsius. Um, at 260 degrees Celsius, it has a much higher melting point and is also much more rigid. Legos are made out of ABS plastic. One of the main disadvantages, though, is with such a high melting point, that means it comes with a very high temperature that it must print at. And with such a high temperature, deformations and problems in the printing process can occur easily. On top of that, ABS releases toxic fumes as it is melted. 3D printers are very versatile. So they can be moved anywhere to any location. The one that you see pictured right there is an Ender 3 Pro. So that's the same kind of printer that I currently have. I actually have it running behind me right now. It's printing out R2-D2. Um, but it, it, they're versatile. You can move them anywhere. They're able to be set up rather easily. There are startup costs associated with different kinds of 3D printers. The Ender 3 that you see here costs about $300 and you do have to assemble it yourself. So they give you all the parts. Obviously, you don't have to make the motors, but you do have to assemble what's known as the gantry, which is that large up and down portion where you see that little motor attached to. You do have to assemble that portion. You have to put a couple of the belts on and you do have to put on the power supply. There are other costs associated with using a 3D printer as well. One of the main ones that you're going to encounter is filament. What you see pictured there is a roll of red filament from a producer known as Hatchbox. I personally like Hatchbox quite a bit. But a roll of filament like that weighs one kilogram, so it's one kilogram of plastic, and that roll costs $25. Now with that roll, I can actually print quite a bit. I can print uh, very, very large structures. I can print a lot of small things. Um, off of just one single roll, but when it runs out, I do need to buy more. It's just like your printer uh, when you have printer ink. You have to buy printer ink to be able to keep printing out paper You know, with things on it. If you run out of ink, you have to buy more ink. There's a time investment. That R2-D2 that I mentioned that's printing behind me is going to take a whopping four days to print out. Um, on top of that time investment, if anything goes wrong during that time, then I'm going to have to restart it. And not only do I have to restart it, that's also a lot of material that's kind of been wasted now based on how much is already printed. There are shipping costs. So people will often order things uh, that they want that they can't really find anywhere else but that 3D printing can accomplish. Sometimes that's little parts, sometimes it's models like R2-D2 that I'm currently printing. Um, sometimes it's little keychains. It can be really anything that you can make out of plastic. Um, but there are shipping costs associated with that if someone who orders from you doesn't order it or, or isn't nearby. So you have to ship it to them. Last but not least, there's the electricity cost as well. So it costs me money in terms of electricity to run my printer for four days straight. Creating programs for others. So this is where Python comes back in. When we're creating those programs, a user will request different features to be a part of that program. So those features may include something along the lines of they want it to be able to uh, tell them a lot of information with very, very little input. Um, users will make requests as well about some additional functionality that they want. And last but not least, you have to worry about the functionality of that program. Is the program working as intended? 
So, your task with this project is to create a program that will calculate the profit of a given order for 3D printed parts. The program requirements are that the user should be able to enter the following about a given print order. They need to be enter able to enter in the total weight in grams that that order is and the time it will take to print. They need to answer a few additional questions about the order. Will the order require shipping? If so, how much will that shipping be? Did you, the user, have to do any additional 3D modeling to make this order work? So that means, did the person who's currently using the program have to do any additional 3D modeling work? So that could mean that they had to fix the model that was being printed, or that they had to create something custom for the customer. Lastly, how many different colors are you using? Every time you want to use a different color, on my 3D printer in particular, I actually have to stop the machine and swap out the roll. That way I can print in a different color, because I don't take the time to paint things. If I took the time to paint things, maybe I wouldn't have to do that. But say that the user who's purchasing it from you says, I don't care about it being painted, just print it off in this color. The program will, in return, after that information is inputted, output what the user told it. So it should repeat the total wait and time that this order will take. And then it will tell the user how much they should charge the customer. So there are different weight requirements and I'm going to put out that there are different price brackets for that those weights. Depending on the weight of the order, the price should change. Your price brackets are zero to 100 grams, 100 to 300 grams, 300 to 500, 500 to 750, 750 to 1,000, and over 1,000. By the way, remember that if we're working in grams, then 1,000 grams is simply one kilogram. So our rolls, again, come at a weight of one kilogram per roll. So if it's over 1,000, so if it's over, over 1,000 grams or over one kilogram, then that means that you have to use an additional roll of filament to help create that. Different price brackets for the time that it's going to take. So your uh, your print, your order should cost a different amount based on how long it takes as well. So does it take less than four hours? Does it take four to 12, 12 to 24, so on and so forth. Use a combination between these two. You may have an order that only weighs zero to 100 grams, but for some reason it takes over four hours to complete. So if it's taking additional time, that's time that you could have been spending printing someone else's order, right? So your time has value there. Conversely, you could have something that takes 700, 500 to 750 grams, but it only takes about 12 hours to print. Simply up to the order and how much that order might weigh. There are additional charges that you should take into account as well. Shipping charges. Do you charge shipping if the order exceeds a certain amount? Many companies will not charge shipping on large orders. So maybe that order is a really, really big order and it's already going to cost that customer $60. Do you decide, eh, you know what, shipping is only $20, I'm not gonna charge them shipping, or do you charge them shipping anyway? Extra 3D model work. Again, consider whether or not you want to charge for that and how much, because that is your time that you have to take to 3D model. Using multiple colors requiring the user to switch out the rolls. Will that cost extra, and if so, how much? On the first day of this assignment, you should get together with your assigned groups. Those assigned groups are available through this assignment in Canvas. Discuss what the requirements are for the program. Discuss and write down how you might go about creating a program to fulfill the user's needs. Discuss the price brackets and why you should price the different brackets at various levels. And be prepared to justify your answers. You'll see this again on day three and four as well, but I expect you to create a presentation as well along with the program. Day two, begin creating a rough outline of your program either on paper or in comments like on Replit. Discuss and work with your group to start writing out different parts of the code. So you could divide it up where someone is doing the questions user, the user needs to be asked, someone figures out the calculations that need to be solved, and someone else figure out, figures out the output that the user receives back. Multiple people can work on the same section of code at the same time as well. Day three, finish working on the program on this day. Work together as a group to make a presentation. Be prepared to both present your program and to justify why you chose the prices you did. Day four, you may take 20 minutes at the beginning 
to talk and finish up your presentation, then we're going to present. I don't expect these presentations to be over a minute and a half. They don't have to be super long. I would expect them to be about anywhere between three to five slides. After your group finishes working on the project, answer some questions individually in Canvas. So there will be a small survey that you'll fill out at the end on Canvas. Last but not least, the 3D printer challenge. So, if you would like to participate in a challenge and potentially win a prize, then take a look at the following requirements. You need to be able to allow the user to enter up to five different orders. The order's weight and time should be totaled up for a grand total. The grand total should be printed back out to the user. The price should be adjusted if there is more than one order. Your group's decision on by how much. Complete this challenge to have the opportunity to have one small item of your choice 3D printed. Each group member gets to pick something. A winner will be selected based on your presentation and program if and only if you complete this challenge. So that means that your program has to function and it has to work with the specifications required. Again, the user has to enter in, can enter in up to five different orders. So that means that we need to be using a for loop, right? Because that means that you need to repeat something five different times. If they only have two orders and if they enter in zero for the other orders, for the uh, other um, possible orders, then nothing else should be added on, right? But if the user does enter something in, then you need to make note of that, okay? A winner will be selected. So that is on a per class basis. This is not among all my classes. This is just in your class in particular. I will select, assuming that at least one group does the challenge, as long as one group does the challenge, I will select a winner from among the groups who did it, and if only one group does it, then that group wins. But I will select one group to be the winner, and every single person in that group will get to submit something to me to be 3D printed and delivered to them later on during the semester. Rules about it being 3D printed, um, the only major rule and stipulation that I have is I am using my 3D printer to do it. Um, your individual object cannot exceed 100 grams. Okay, so that's, you can work with quite a bit there and I will let you submit whatever you want to me. If it is too large, then I will scale it down so that it is right at 100 grams. Or if it's very small and you say to me, hey, Mr. Burson, can you scale this up um, to 100 grams? Then I would be happy to do that. But 100 grams is the limit. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me or ask me about this in class. Otherwise, good luck.